Hi, I would like to give you a topic of a curve sketch. Uh, curve sketching is a is a, is a is a big topic in in, in calculus. Uh, actually, it's an application of the derivatives. Uh, well, this video consists of uh, seven parts. First, as the introduction, then uh, followed by six examples. All right. Curve sketching. Now let's re recall some basic concepts. Uh, function. It's a function. Function uh, uh, y equal to f of x. So we say that x is a function. Uh, y is a function of x. Say me function, and uh, give me an x. I give you a y. Right? Whatever x you give me, I give you a unique y. This human hunting process is a function, and uh, that set of x's is the domain. And the set of y is called range, and this human thing is a function operation, and a mean function. Uh, this is, I think, is very clear, and uh, uh, give a variable x, and I give you back. And variable x and uh, these two readings form an uh, ordered pair. That ordered pair is in the Cartesian coordinate system is a point. When you collect all the points satisfy this equation, then form a form a curve. That curve is a two-dimensional curve for one, one variable function. And uh, we try to sketch that curve actually. Is a sketch the function. Okay, then uh, the limit. The limit is this: the limit as x approaches to a of y is equal to b. This means this means what? Well, of course, we, we don't we don't approach this by a formal definition, which is very complicated, and we use intuitive way to understand the limit. It means that when x are close, when x are close to a, then the y is approaching to b. Actually, this means two things: that the the left limit must be equal to the right limit. So, namely, this limit as a x approaches to a from the right hand side, so y equal to b, and uh, the limit x approaches to a from the left hand side is also equal to b. If these two are not the same, both side limit is not the same, then we say a limit does not exist. So that is a very important concept. And before we sketch the curve, then the derivative. The derivative. Uh, the definition of derivative is this: the limit, right? Delta x approaches to zero, and the f of uh, x plus delta x minus f of x. By the x. If this limit is, exists, then we say the function is differentiable. So this is the definition of a derivative. And since this is a limit, therefore, it has to satisfy the definition of limit, which has uh, both sides and it must be the same. So this means that the limit delta x approaches to 0 from right hand side. And uh, this is, uh, must be equal to must be equal to the other side of limit. It must be the same okay. equal to the delta x approaches to zero from the left hand side. Okay. This is, is uh, these two limit must be same. If they are not same, we say there's not differential. This is a very important concept because to sketch the curve, you have to have a very clear mind, clear, clear picture, clear concept before we sketch the curve. <coughs> now, the continuity. A function is continuous from intuitive way understanding that the curve has to, to be smoothly continued, right? Not necessarily smooth, but it must be you know, point by point connected. And what kind of condition or what function will be continuous at a point? 
And let, let me draw some picture that which is uh, not continuous. If function is not continuous, what are they? See, this could be, right? There's a hole here. Now, the function is not continuous at point A. Say so this, uh, this is point A, B. Right? This is point A and B. Then we say that function is not, not continuous at A. Uh, for re what reason? Why is that an X1? And for what reason is not continuous? Because uh, the function is not defined at A. That's one reason function is not continuous. And this could be another this could be another way of a discontinuous. This is A B, right? This is A B. This is A C. Alright, the function is not continuous at A. For what reason? For what reason? Well, because the left limit is not equal to right limit. Right? That's the reason the function is not continuous. Now, how about this case? Uh, this is uh, A, C, right? This is uh, A, B. Now, the function is not continuous at A. Not because uh, the function is not defined, the function is defined at A. The function, the limit is existing because uh, both side limit is equal to B. The reason it is not continuous is because that the limit value is not equal to the function value. So, so we summarize that a function that continues at point A has to follow by these uh, satisfaction. So the first one is that if A exists, but defined, is defined. That means you can find value of F of A. And uh, second reason that the limit that has to exist, uh, x approaches to a, x approaches to a, must exist, right? it exists. And uh, the third reason is that this is one, this is two, and one must be equal to two. And by satisfying these uh, three conditions, then the function is different. Is continuous at the point A. All right. But these are very important and basic concepts before we sketch the curve. Right. In other words, we delete this case, delete this case, delete that case. Function is continuous at A. If, it com if a function is continuous at all the points in the domain, then we say this is continuous function. So these are very basic, important. The stuff before uh, we, we sketch a function. All right, now, next, uh, before we sketch the function, we have to examine function briefly, see what kind of properties, what kind of uh, uh, feature we can follow. First is the domain and the range. You are given a function, and you are required. You are required to sketch it. And let first we see the domain and the range. Why? Because if we know the domain, we know the range. Then we can plan the graph, or we know at least in my mind that the function is a, is a drawn from which to which, and so on. The range of the picture, right? Uh, roughly understand that the property of the function. And then symmetry. The symmetry. The function could be symmetrical with respect to all uh, y axis if the function is even. Then we sketch the curve, we just do the half of it. The other half could be using you know, mirror image reflection. And the function could be symmetrical with respect to origin, which is the function is a uh, order function. And you draw half of, half, half of the graph. And you did a half, you don't have to draw. You use symmetry. You know, rotate 180 degrees, you get the other half. And uh, the function could be pure, 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 periodic. 
right? Uh, if the function would be a periodic function, for example, sine cosine function, right? Then you just schedule one period, and uh, by repeating, you get you know, as many as many periods as you want in the domain. So by knowing this, you know, you can know the picture before you sketch. Uh, then what other things that might be interesting? Uh, the intercept. Intercept. Intercept, uh, y intercept or x intercept. Most cases that y intercept could be found easily. Then we know that the curve is passing particular points. And if x intercept is not easy to be found, then you just leave it. You can um, estimate and rough, uh, when you sketch a curve, you can rough estimate where is x, inter x intercept. And uh, then uh, you have asymptotes. Asymptote. Asymptote, we, we, we will talk about later. Okay. So, by knowing asymptotes, we can sketch the function nicely. We know that the curve is uh, obey certain certain rule and the way of uh, it behaves. So these are factors to be considered uh, before we sketch the curve. By examining these uh, things, right? And uh, then derivative, because. When you sketch a function, you, really, you have to know the shape. Increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, con concavity, those, those factors have to be determined. So we first see the first derivative, uh, dy dx. dy dx is, that, is the derivative, uh, which is uh, this, my delta equals zero, f of x plus delta x. Minus f of x over delta x. Well, mere function. I'm a corresponding uh, x. Give me x, I give you y. Now, this is a way, this is a calculation function. But in calculus, in derivative, we are not calculating the function, but rather we are, we are calculating the, the ratio between the change of x. And the change of y. If you change your x very little, and the y change is also very little, then the ratio, when x is almost zero, changes. The change of x is almost zero. This rate is called derivative. Right. So derivative is, is actually the moment, uh, the change of uh, the rate of changes momentarily, and uh, momentarily changes between x and y. That rate is the derivative. In geometry, that is actually the gradient of the tangent line in the curve. The curve is a function. Uh, or you may say slope. Slope is gradient. And this is a gradient tangent, if, if, if it exists. And this, this value has a three possibilities, right? Positive, negative, zero. Uh, positive means what? Means the gradient tangent line is positive. So it has to be this way. So it has to be this way, right? The gradient tangent is positive. The tangent must be this way. So the curve must be what? Must be increasing. Uh, increasing. So in other words, if the derivative is positive, then the function is increasing at that point. And uh, obviously, if it's negative, the tangent has to be this way. So the function is, uh, is a decrease. And uh, if the, the derivative is zero, which means that the tangent line is horizontal, which is the maximum or minimum, right? Uh, yeah, 
maximum of the mean. So this is an important tool for us to to know the, to know the curves the increasing or decreasing. And by knowing decreasing and increasing is not enough for us to sketch the curve. We have to know how the shape looked like, right? The concavity of the, the concavity of the curve. Then we're using second derivative. Second derivative is the derivative, the changing of uh, changing of uh, the gradient, tending line gradient with respect to x. So if this one has also three possibilities, right? If the limit exists, this is positive or negative or zero. Positive means what? Positive means the gradient of the tending line is getting higher and higher. Does that make sense? Yes. This is the changing of a gradient in terms of, uh, well, uh, with respect to x. That means as x increases, the change of the gradient is uh, positive. That means gradient is, uh, gradient tenure is uh, getting more and more. If this is the case, if this is the case, that means the curve has to be, uh, the curve has to be this way, right? See, the tenure line is getting more and more, more and more. This is positive. Or if the tending line, uh, if the gradient tending line is negative, and 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 uh, less than a less negative, less than a less negative. If this is the gradient of tending line is negative, and a less than a less negative. If a less than a less negative means it's increasing. So when the second derivative is positive, the curve. Look like that. And if uh, the gradient change is negative, which means the tending line gradient is getting less and less, the, the sort of the curve the function has to be this way. See, the gradient is less and less, less and less. And if the negative case, and the, the gradient tending line is getting more and more negative, which means they decrease. The gradient tending line is decreasing. Um, when this is equal to zero, that means between these two two situations, that means uh, either this or that, right? Well, in that case, this is a point inflection. So the second derivative is zero, and at this point, it may be a point of inflection. Now, I, I, I combine these all, all together makes one this far, right? <laughs> uh, Sonny, you can see that? Okay. Now, this curve looks like a bowl. A bowl. Uh, a bowl. It holds water. So it's positive. Holds water. Positive means secondary positive. So if the curve it looks like this shape, the secondary is positive. Meaning the when x increases, the gradient change is increasing. When x is decreasing, the, the, the tending gradient is decreasing. So that makes positive. And uh, this shape is decreasing. First derivative is negative. This curve is increasing. First derivative is positive. And here, the first derivative is sub zero, and which is minimum. So by by combining all pieces of information here, we can have a very you know, nice picture, give you different all sources of information here. Uh, instead of memorizing the concavity, uh, curve concavities uh, through derivatives, very complicated. But here, there, all the information is there, right? This is a bowl, a polyp. Now, this is an umbrella. Umbrella does not hold water, so it's a negative. Negative. And second derivative is negative. First derivative is equal. The positive increasing. First derivative is negative, decreasing. And the shape is there. And when uh, first derivative is zero, it's maximum. Everything has come out so naturally. You know? 
All right. Finally, let's see this picture. Now, this is a function. Uh, suppose, we, suppose we try to sketch this function. How do we sketch this function? We cannot randomly select points to calculate and randomly put some points there. This will n never give you kind of a nice picture showing the function. Uh, we have to have a, a general over, overview of the whole, whole, whole function uh, through, through some special features that like, uh, like asymptote, right? Like asymptote, like a y-intercept, like the point at which the derivative does not exist. Because the left-hand side is this gradient, right-hand side is that gradient, therefore at this point gradient tangent lines um, not equal. Uh, therefore the function is not, not, dif not differential at a point. But the function is continuous. The continuity and the differentiability they are two different not necessarily not necessarily the same. A function is continuous but not differentiable. Or a function could be differentiable but not continuous. And so on. And uh, Minimum and concave up, concave down, and so on. So, this is a nice way to analyze the picture through these, through these features, right? I remember the Chinese story of uh, I don't know if you know the story or not. A blind man touching the elephant. Blind man, the four blind men, they never, never seen an elephant. And then one day, you know. Just happened to be an, an elephant in front of them, so they they want to know what how the elephant looked like. And then the first man, right, touching the elephant, touching the body, uh, he said, "Ah, oh, elephant must look like a piece of wool." And then the second second uh, second lineman uh, holds the leg of, yeah, of the elephant. And he said, oh, the elephant must look like a post. <laughs> and uh, the third lineman uh, touched the ear of the elephant and said, oh, the elephant looks like a fang. And uh, the, the last elephant, the lineman touched by grass the, the tail, right? Uh, elephant must look like a rope. So this, you know, this lineman touched the elephant could be a, a a better way of sketching the curve. You, know, you you cross randomly drop to some point, but you do not get whole overall shape. So to sketch the curve, the best way is through those analyzation, right? Asymptote point at which is not dif uh, not differentiable at which is equal to zero, right? Second derivative equals zero. Is point inflection, right, and so on. So we get these. Uh, this is a critical point. 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 This is a critical point, and this is the. So we we grasp those uh, critical points, and uh, then uh, you get the sub intervals from from them. Then you, then you analyze the shape between. Now, in those sub-intervals through, through derivatives. Now, let me repeat again, this is very important. When you analyze a picture or analyze a function for sketching a curve, you grasp some main points. The main points could be asymptote, could be uh, intercept, could be the point at which the derivative does not, does not exist, or could be the derivative equals zero, minimum, could be point inflection, could be maximum, could be. then you study the shape between these uh, these points through the through derivative, right? So this is the introduction of a curve sketch. And then follow, following that I'll give you different examples showing all the different cases.